Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. You know, this is so happy. I'm so happy because right now I can do so many more things than we were doing before, you know, with the outdoor set. Now that football season is actually upon us, uh, we were actually discussing fantasy football with my brother Roz and uh, D2 Stu getting you ready for the game game action tomorrow tomorrow uh, we will be live streaming starting about 12 45 the early games of course we have uh, the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Atlanta Falcons we'll have our exclusive Philly 500 meltdown cam so you can follow along on both streams as well as watch and see what the Washington football team looks like against the uh, Chargers because we will be playing the Chargers next Sunday so we are definitely scouting out everything with the NFC East we'll have a few of our friends and stuff over here and then at the 425 kickoff, we'll be following along with the New York stinking Giants and see if Daniel Jones survives with that offensive line he has against Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. Good luck with that one. So one of the interesting things is, you know, nobody knows everything. Nobody knows everything. And sometimes somebody will bring something to me and it'll make it click and I can kind of put together the pieces, so to speak. And when we were doing our live stream early, I got this light a little bit too bright over here. Good Lord. Looks like I'm looking into the sun right now, but it's okay. Um, Stu brought up and showed me a graphic on um, running backs that have faced the Tampa Bay, Bay, T Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense last year. And, you know, we've heard so many people, you know, last night I had people, the Cowboys stink in the red zone, you know, Dak sucks, he should be replaced. If only we had a good quarterback, you know, they would have won. And so I said to myself, or I said to some people, let me ask you this. If the only change we made was we took Dak out and we put Pat Mahomes in, do we win? Do we win that game? You know, does Pat Mahomes do that much better against that Tampa Bay defense than what Dak Prescott did? And yes, I am comparing Dak Prescott to Pat Mahomes. I am right now, right now, this moment, because I'm going to say, no, it doesn't make a difference. That Tampa Bay defense is that good. And here, uh, let me go through. Now, now for us, Jason Garrett. Love running the football after they discovered running the football um, when Tony Romo came back that 2014 season from the back surgery and that first game could not really get the ball downfield. They were forced to run the football and they discovered we can win this way and they kept up with it. Well, now Mike McCarthy, it's truly clear that Mike McCarthy loves throwing the football. You know, people were saying, you know, Mike McCarthy and Zeke Elliott, that's not going to exactly work real well because he doesn't really believe in a running game that much, that it's really about passing the football. Well, you can kind of understand that, and that may be the case, but I'm not quite ready to say that is the case, at least not yet, because um, this is where there's perception and there's reality, Okay. People, you know, uh, uh, listening to some of the talking heads, they're like, you know, I don't know about the Cowboys game plan there. You know, they should have run Zeke Elliott more because they would have had more success. You know, uh, he should have had 20 carries. He should have had 20. And, you know, you didn't give it a chance and blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, here's the thing. I want to change cameras over here. And hopefully you guys can see this chart over here. Thank you. Shout out to uh, the, the wolf, DK Stu, a.k.a. Stu. Here's the thing about that Tampa Bay defense. This is freaking insane when you look at this. Because of all the fat backs that faced the Tampa Bay defense, they didn't do too good. There was only one that got over 100 yards, and that was Dalvin Cook, who had 102 um, on 22 carries, which was the only one that was anywhere close to that. In fact, he is the only other one that went over 60 yards, and there's only one that went over, other one that went over 50. Alvin Kamara, the season opener, which actually the Saints won, 
He had 12 carries for 16 yards, 1.3 yard average. Christian McCaffrey had 18 carries for 59 yards, 3.3. Melvin Gordon had 8 carries for 26 yards. Um, the Chargers' entire team had 23 carries for 46 yards. The Bears' Montgomery had 10 carries for 29. Um, Aaron Jones had 10 carries for 15 yards. Um, the Raiders' Jacobs had 10 carries for 17. I mean, the list goes on. The list goes on. The only ones that had over 50 yards were uh, McCaffrey, who averaged 3.3, 59s, and Dalvin Cook, who he, he's a man, had 102 with 4.6. So the Cowboys looked at that and said, why? Why? Why do we try and run the football against somebody you cannot run the football against? Not when we have Dak Prescott and all these wide receivers. Now, you can look at that and say, well, you still got to try. Well, the Cowboys decided what we're going to do is we're going to use the short passing game as a running game. We're going to get the guys outside. We're going to let Dak dink and dunk and, and, and pick them apart, so to speak, and get the ball downfield. Now, back to this thing about Pat Mahomes versus Dak Prescott. Let me give you guys a little taste here. What, what, what we got with Dak Prescott, and you can say what you want, that we, you know, one and four in the red zone and all that, even though he had three TD passes against the Tampa Bay defense that, you know, brought back everybody. Tampa Bay said, it was fun last year. We want to kick it back again. We're bringing back all starters on offense and defense. So it's the same defense they had last year. Dak Prescott, with that group of guys, had 72.4% completions. 403 yards in that game, okay? Mind you, that is his fourth 400-plus yard game in six games. Dak Prescott's arm might fall off before the season's over with. Um, yard average, 6.9. Uh, actually, let me slide this down a little bit because I want to get the complete numbers because I want you to see the, the ratings and all. His rating against the Tampa Bay defense on a night that you could not run the football and they knew you were going to pass was a 101.4. He was sacked one time. Okay? Right? Three TDs and an interception that should have been a catch. But, unfortunately, he got tipped up. Okay. Pat Mahomes. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. But here is Pat Mahomes in the Super Bowl against that same Tampa Bay defense. 270 yards. Dak Prescott actually threw, threw 133 yards more. Completion percentage, 52.1. Dak Prescott's completion percentage was 19 points higher. Average pass, 5.5. Dak, 6.9. Interceptions, Pat Mahomes had two. Dak had the one. Sacks. Three of them. Three of them. And a rating of 52.3. Dax almost doubled it at 101. I know what you're going to say. Well, his offensive line wasn't good. It's funny how... When last year, when our offensive line, because for those of you who end up saying his offensive line wasn't good in the Super Bowl, um, was Dallas's offensive line good at any point last year? Tyron Smith only played in two games, one and a half games. Lyle Collins didn't play at all. Joe Looney was our center until he got hurt, in which case we ended up having to play Tyler Badish, who was a rookie. Some of those games, we had a rookie 
undrafted free agent starting for Dak Prescott. So I don't want to hear that Pat Mahomes in that game had a bad offensive line. That's not an excuse. Now, here's something else that's interesting. And, and I know I'm going to get haters. Haters are going to come out. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm used to people hating on me. But here's an interesting thing right here. Is this chart. What this is is 400 yard plus games. Tony Romo down here has got five. Now, I know what you're going to say. It's a different game now than it was back when, say, Roger Staubach. And I'll give you that, Roger Staubach or Troy Aikman, because the rules have changed. You can't touch the quarterback, the wide receivers. You can't touch them after five yards, okay, or you're going to get the you know illegal contact. You know, So you're going to get a lot more yardage and things now because of it. Of course, offense are going five wide outs and stuff. So we understand that this is a statistic that really over, say, the last 10, 12 you know, 15 years is where it's going to be made and that these numbers probably in 10 years will be eclipsed, okay? At the bottom here, we have Tony Romo at 5. At the top, we have Drew Brees with 16. And I'm betting that by the time Dak Prescott gets finished, um, his career, that Dak Prescott will be blowing this away. Because here's where it's interesting, and I, I know what y'all going to say, they're garbage time yards, man. It don't mean nothing. You know, he's garbage stat guy. Well, you know what? There's a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams that are bad that are getting blown out, where, as y'all call it, cheap points are made. But it's funny because I don't see a lot of those quarterbacks in here with it, other than Ryan Fitzpatrick, who's got six. Dak, Dak Prescott is right now at eight. Eight of them. Just one behind, just one behind Aaron Rodgers. Say what? Yeah. He's only one 400-yard passing game from Aaron Rodgers. And Eli Manning, too. And as you go up this list... Like I said, Drew Brees is at 16. Peyton Manning is at 14. So what does all this mean? Why did I even come here and do this video? Well, because <laughs> I'm a YouTube addict, man. <laughs> the camera keeps calling me, man. It keeps calling me. <laughs> okay. It keeps calling me, man. All right. So the question we have now is, what does this mean for Zeke Elliott going forward? We got people who are literally saying, trade Zeke. I literally had people saying, trade him for a kicker. And we need to deal with the kicker too because I think <laughs> I think Jerry Jones has given him the kiss of death because he said he's got confidence in that guy. And it seems like everybody he has confidence with is kind of like when they give you the kiss on both cheeks, you know, in The Godfather, you know you're swimming with the fish. You know you're swimming with the fishies. Because, bro, that means you're on your last leg. Um, but, but we'll deal with that part later. The question is, A, are we passing the ball too much? Did Kellen Moore abandon the run too soon against Tampa Bay? Clearly, looking at the numbers, nobody's having success against running that football. And if you know you're not going to be able to do anything on that, why do you continue to do something just to say that you're doing something? We've been in games before where we say, you know, like the Minnesota Viking game I've talked about this morning. You know, we're a running team. And so we got to get Zeke Elliott's touches. And even though his touches haven't been amounting to anything, and we went back to the run and it cost us the game instead of putting it in the quarterback's hands. Clearly, whether you guys want to admit it or not, you have a quarterback who can move the ball down the field, who has a great repertoire with his receivers, who can fit the ball in just about anywhere. And they're trying to exploit that. Now, the bigger question is, you know, knowing that Mike McCarthy loves to pass the football, is are we at an unsustainable pace 
for Dak Prescott to be able to throw and not literally have his arm fall off. Like I said, four of his last six games. Actually, or is it four of his last five? It may be four of his last five games. Because I believe it was three in a row. And then the Giant game wasn't. And then this one. Here's another interesting piece on this too. Before last year when Dak Prescott had three. Nobody had ever had three in a season before. This is insane what we're doing with the ball passing. Now, if we could just get all three phases of the game playing well at the same time, you can hang with anybody. We need our special teams to play better than what they did last week. The defense was good in spots. Had a couple of letdowns and a few plays. Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Got a little little cold. Got a little something there in my throat. If we could get all three phases of the game playing well at the same time, you can hang with anybody. Dak Prescott. Pat Mahomes. That's one case. Same exact defense. Same exact players. Dak Prescott killed it versus Pat Mahomes. But I know the haters, of course. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, real hating, man, that's like an art form, man. You know, it's like, you like a born a hater, you know, like myself, man. You know, a lot of cats think they hate, but, man, I mean, I'm mad, you know, I'm mad at everything, man. You know, brother got a nice car, man. Why you got a car, man? I only got one car. Why you got Why you got three cars or a wife or all that, man? I mean, that's played out, man. I hate on it till he's totally broke and ain't got nothing like me. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, yeah, that's what real hating is all about, man. That's what real hating's all about. And with that being said, you know how we roll. Tomorrow, be sure to join us for our live stream starting out at 1245. We'll be Sports Center, cross with Red Zone, and hanging at the sports bar with your friends. I'm Mark Holmes, and well. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. <laughs> Yeah, how about them Cowboys? I'll see you soon.